So welcome to Lure Painting Live. Uh, this is Saturday Night Edition. We're going to do some swim baits tonight. So I hope everybody's ready. So I am Krista. Um, if you are interested in purchasing any of the lures that I sell, they are available at coloradocustomlures.com. You are, if you're live, you're watching me on April 10th. I am going to run a special through the weekend. So that's just until tomorrow evening at uh, the end of the the day basically which will be buy three get one free on hard baits so get them while you can that's about the best deal that i ever offer so uh they're only going to be good through the weekend orders fifty dollars and up will ship free so take advantage of the deal while you can um i've been uh working hard and, and um this design was designed that chris my husband if you don't know him was um was suggesting for me to do live so it is a very colorful bluegill, and we will see how I can how I can uh, make it look. So I'm gonna pull up the feed here on on my device so that I can see everybody's comments live, um, and I'm gonna post the website as well so that you can see how to get to my website, and uh, also follow me on Instagram. That's where you'll be able to see when I post new items that are available on the website. They'll be posted through Instagram and shared onto Facebook. So follow me on Instagram at Colorado Customers, all one word. That is how you find me. And I will try and post my uh, bio link so that you can all um, just click on that for the links to all my social media. So I'm trying to find the feed on here and it's being a butt. So hang on one second. And I'll get started. So hopefully everybody's well. You got to do some fishing today. Um, uh, I took the kids out to Canyon City, which is nearby for some playing in the river and some park time. And Chris fished a tournament with friends. So that was the Denver Bass Masters tournament out here in Pueblo. And um, they had a good time. It was tough fishing, definitely, but they had a good time. So that's all, I can, all that matters, right? Winning is nice, but you know, fishing is the best part, right? We keep telling ourselves. Okay, so these are some nice uh, bluegill glide baits. These have a hair tail on them, so underneath here is just it's just a hair tail, um, and so I covered that up with tape so that we don't paint over the tail. And as soon as I get the feet up on my iPad, I can tell if this camera angle looks decent or not, but it's really slow. We're having internet problems here. So if any of the, the quality of the video is not good, unfortunately, there's not much that I can do about it. Um, like I said, we're just having problems with, with our internet. So um, it is what it is. So I'm trying to, I can see some of you guys' comments, but it's not coming up the way that it should. So it's kind of upsetting. Let me try closing this. I'm just restarting it. So these are, I believe, um, they're just a little over one ounce. I'd have to weigh it again to say for sure. And um, they're just a nice, really slow sinking glide. They have a rattle in them, so you can hear it's pretty loud. Um, and they're very realistic looking. So I primed these up before the show with Steinol Res, which is a acrylic polyurethane, and um, it will help your paint adhere better to the bait than just a basic acrylic paint. So I do highly recommend it. But then I also went over it with a base coat of white. And this is actually um, wicked opaque detail white, flat opaque detail white. And um, I use that because I think it's nice and bright. It sprays nice. And so that's what I use for my base coat and my white in general. Um, on my lures so let me see if i can get this video up here again i'm so sorry but it's always some problems we're supposed to be getting way faster internet but um unfortunately they were supposed to um, go live switching us to a new tower we're on satellite internet and um the part they were waiting for is on back order so now it's going to be like another month so i was hoping for lightning that lightning speeds but it's not happening right now so we'll just deal with what we got for now. And if uh, the quality sucks, I apologize. There's nothing I can do about it right now. We're way, we're kind of out in the country. So our options are really limited. So 
good. You got some good weather. Awesome. Make sure you guys share the feed as well so that uh, we can get as many people as possible up here. And then I'm going to post the details of the sale here at the bottom. I copied and pasted it and it's now not copy. It's not working. So let me do this again. Technology hates me. I swear to God, everything seems so perfect. And then I go to do it and it's like, no, nope. sorry, not happening. Paste, paste, paste. Oh my God, I hate it so much. No, don't select all, paste. There we go. Ah, there we go, I think I got it. Maybe. All right, there we go. Whoo, that was tough. I posted this all in the description too, so You'll see where you see Insta bio CC. That's where you can go to like get links to all my different social media sites. So if you want to follow Instagram, you want to see what's new as soon as it's available. That's where I post it. Um, so let's get started. Um, I just netted this one like this to show you kind of like how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to take this off because I'm a moron and I forgot that I need different colors under here. So let me quickly show you guys the reference photo. And um, that way you can see kind of where we're going with this. When he uh, showed me this, I was like, no, no. And then I'm like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? It turns out like crap. And we don't do it again, right? So you got to tell yourself that every single time that you go to paint something new, you just say the worst that can happen is it turns out like crap. And you start over or you just don't do it again. So here's our reference photo. Okay. And you may have seen this online before. It's probably all over the place. And it's probably like um, at the top of the searches when you search for like bluegill pictures. Um, and I'm sure it's been done before. So I'm gonna see if I can do as good as, you know, those before me. So um, let's see here. Um, I might not see your comments throughout the whole uh, feed because I'm looking at my iPad to see the picture. So I'll flip back and forth. So as you can see, as you can see on that um, reference photo, which I wish I could paste, but I don't think I can. Um, it has like some blue underneath and I think this was a heavily altered photo I'm gonna add I don't think that there's really a fish that looks like this So I know it's been manipulated to look this pretty but we're just gonna go with it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with um, This is Laguna wicked Laguna blue um, By createx and this is what I'm gonna use um, near the belly area for the blue that was there and I'll show you the reference photo again in case some of you are just joining us and you didn't, you know, I'll show it more than once so people can see it after the fact. So I'm going to clean this out. I, I forgot to clean this out earlier. I just left water sitting in it. So it's got white paint in here because I'm a moron. Um, also, like every single time that I quit like leave my live feed after my show, I always inevitably leave black paint in my airbrush. It's like almost every show I do that. And I get back there in there the next day and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Cause then I have to like scrub out the whole front side of the brush and like flush it out. It just, it just sucks. I've gotten pretty good at cleaning them though. And I can clean out just about anything. Okay, so let me spray a little water through here and it should be good. I had left water in there so it wasn't like dried in there too bad or anything. So this stuff is really thick. Some of the wicked, some of the wicked paints are pretty heavy, are pretty thick. Um, the wicked detail colors are more spray ready than the wicked colors are, but you don't get the same color options. So sometimes you have no choice. If you want a certain color, you kind of have to do what what you have to do so all about the base yeah so join me on YouTube too if you guys haven't um, followed my YouTube channel the link to that is also on that insta bio link that I posted in the pinned comments you can uh, you can join my YouTube channel um, one of these days I'm gonna get around to doing some more technique videos I just don't ever have time so someday and I don't edit videos like I don't even know how to edit videos I just like if my kids were in school full time, I keep telling myself I would have more time, but I still have a preschooler. So I only get like two and a half hours a day um, to myself basically during the week. 
Yeah, and I have to cram in, like, you know, as much as I can. And usually it's painting. So I'm just kind of shading. I'll show you what this looks like. I'm just kind of shading, you know, the areas where under the scales we have a color. And then I'm going to go over it with scales. Okay, so I'm going to put down color on underneath where it looks like it's underneath. And then we'll go back over. We'll do some scales on top and then probably add a little bit of color on top of that. And it's probably not going to look exactly like the picture, but um, we're going to try and get somewhat close, and it'll be pretty, I'm sure. Fingers crossed. Okay. Hello to everybody. I'm just popping in and checking your comments to see if anybody has chimed in or asked a question. It's not loading very well, so I'm going to refresh this. I just have too many things going on. I'm going to shade this blue on the other side here um, while I'm waiting for my comments to load if they ever do. I'll do the best I can, you guys, with the comments. So I, I, if you just join me, there I am running a special only tonight and tomorrow. So uh, the pin comment for the details. I got quite a bit of stuff in stock. I don't have a lot of plastics, jigs, or, um, you know, spinners, wire baits, or anything like that right now. I'm working on it. Um, they'll be coming. And I'm going to unwrap this one because I was, I was kind of like, I got ahead of myself. And I wrapped this, like, and I have no idea why I wrapped it because it needs to be wrapped after I get some colors down underneath. Not a very good idea. But at least now you know what that's going to look like when we do get it wrapped. Um, I always try to do two because if, then if I screw something up like beyond hair, I have a backup. Um, I still can't see the comments, you guys. I'm like super sorry. It's just not loading. I'm going to um, I'm gonna close out. Yeah, I don't know. I can't get anything to work. Uh, if you guys need to ask a question um, and you really want to ask a question now, pop over to, um, I can't even get this to work at all. Pop over to um, the YouTube channel and ask me a question. Or if I can't catch you on um, here tonight, you can always PM me a question if I miss it. And I apologize for that. Um, I'm just, I'm doing the best I can, unfortunately. My internet just sucks right now. So... I'm not going to waste too much time worrying about that, but I probably will waste too much time worrying about that, but I'm going to pretend like I won't. All right. So I'm just shading the area that I want to be blue. And um, I did get a little bit carried away with the color there. It ran just a tiny bit. Do you see how it kind of pulled up on the, on the bottom there a little bit? That's because I sprayed too much at once. And that was, that's what will happen if you don't, use light coats and let it dry in between as you'll see that start to happen oh the bluegill swim bait brad it's your lucky day i don't have it clear coated yet i'm clear coating a bunch of stuff right now so it will be clear coated here in just like a day but anyway that's what that's what your bluegill looks like he ordered a glided bluegill <laughs> and it's just not clear coated yet um let's see here Thanks, everybody, for joining. Make sure you share the feed if you're able to. And then also check out the special, which I believe is still pinned. I don't think I missed any questions, so I'm going to keep moving. What else is new? If you guys are local, make sure you check out the ABA Tournament Trail. If you're in Colorado, uh, my husband runs the Chris. He's watching on and off. He's watching the kids too. So he runs the ABA tournament trail here in Colorado and he runs an awesome tournament, very well organized. And they have really good payouts. So if you're interested, just shoot him a message on the um, Colorado American Bass page. Or you can PM me if you don't want to try and find that and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction too. So, all right, we're going to move on with the colors here. I'm going to pop away from comments for just a minute so that I can see my picture. 
Hey, Mike, how's it going? That's my brother, Mike, in Iowa. Warming up there, too, I think. So um, now I'm going to put some purple down and a little bit of blue. So this is violet, and this is a Comart color made by the same company that makes um, uh, Awada, so like the Eclipse airbrush. It's the same company. Uh, and they make really nice, um, ready to spray paints. You don't need any reducer. They're nice and thin, kind of like inks almost. Um, and they're kind of expensive. You only get one ounce versus like uh, you get two ounces in a Createx bottle for like about the same price. So they're a little expensive, but they're very highly pigmented. And so you get, um, I think a good value pretty much for, um, for what it costs, I think I think it's worth it. And I'm not gonna worry about the fit. I'm just gonna kind of go over it because um, I'll go over that thin with like a brown or black. It's like a brownish black later, and I will um, correct that. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So I'm just going along the bottom cheek line here with purple. And I may end up going over all this stuff later with like some iridescence just to make it like pop on top of the black scales. But I'm playing around right now and I don't have a great plan. We're just kind of going to see where this takes us and hope the best. And then we have a little bit of purple. So I'm just going to kind of mix in like some purple areas in here. There's a lot going on in the picture and it's not easy to tell. Like the colors all kind of run together. So I'm just going to kind of throw some purple here and there where it looks like there might be some. And the black scaling is going to cover a lot of this. So you're not going to, you're not even going to be able to see some of it, but um, this will go underneath the scaling. So, um, you know, just wherever you think it might look purple in the picture, just throw some paint and we'll just pray it turns out. And if it doesn't, guess what? You can take the paint off if you're using water base that's the nice thing about it is you can just take the paint off and start over you know and i think that um, it's important to not you know feel like you can't just start over because you can't and i know it sucks sometimes but worth it if you want it to look right right okay now on this one i think i'm gonna go i'm i'm debating on my color switch but i don't think so i'm just gonna keep going with this color and pray we'll pray that this works and then if i screw one of these up beyond belief then at least i'd have like the same thing to go off of so i'm just doing like some you can kind of see like how i'm just random randomly putting purple down underneath in some spots. I'm totally guessing how to do this. I have no like plan when I start this. Um, I just try and figure it out as I go. For me, it's easier. Like you try and plan it, expect it to turn out perfect and um, it doesn't anyway. So, and I don't have time all the time to do these before the show. So, yeah, kind of get what you get. If they look like crap, then at least you know what not to do, right? Okay. So we're just rinsing this out with a little bit of water in that spray bottle. Um, usually I just use water. If I get like some paint that's dried in there, I'll use isopropyl alcohol. I usually use 90% or whatever it is, but they didn't have any. The time I went to the store, it was like, I think I bought that when like, you know, COVID was new and everybody was buying all the alcohol out of the stores to try and make hand sanitizer. So I bought all this 70%, which it's fine. It'll still clean. It cleans out your brush really well, alcohol does. Um, and it's better than using acetone because acetone is very corrosive. So um, I would use rubbing alcohol if possible. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of yellow now on the backside here and a little bit of golden yellow. So I'll pull up my picture here for you guys to see what I'm doing again. So along the tail edge here, 
Can you kind of see the golden yellow that's underneath there? I've got two cameras going, you guys. So if I move the picture, it's because I'm showing it different feeds. So I'm gonna do a little bit of yellow underneath here, and then I'm gonna do um, some spots of golden yellow kind of mixed in. And we're just prepping for the scales. Like once I get the scales done, we'll do um, like some black, and then I'm gonna do some probably iridescent highlights. I didn't dig out my iridescent colors, so you guys are gonna have to deal with me digging through my paints when we get to the end a little bit. I wasn't really thinking I was gonna need them, but now that I think about it, I think I will. So along the tail edge here, kind of like up to where the swim bait splits, I'm just gonna put some yellow down. Um, so just like this. I don't know if you can see the yellow in the YouTube feed. It doesn't really show up very well on my laptop, but. I might need to make some lighting adjustments. Um, hey guys, th those of you over at, on YouTube, can you see the colors on this when I hold it up? Can, or is it just white? Because to me it looks white on my laptop. It's very hard to see. But I don't know if that's just my computer or if it looks like that on your phones. Or I might need to do, I don't know, something with my camera or my lighting. It's a fairly, it's fairly new uh, camera to me, so surely I've got some room for improvement. I know the microphone's not great on YouTube. Um, I've been just in a better microphone. So much money. And then... We're gonna do a little bit of, I'm thinking, missing something. I'm just thinking guys, bear with me here. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm indecisive right now, I'm sorry. On the top of this, ugh. Let's do a little bit of blue, um, but we're gonna do a different kind of blue. I'm gonna do a darker one on the top. We're gonna do, this, this is cobalt blue. This is wicked detailed cobalt blue, I think. Is it cobalt? What is it called? If anybody needs some, I got way more than I ever need. I don't know why about this. Detailed cobalt blue is this color. And I have like 400 gallons of it. And I don't know what I was thinking when I bought that. But I did. So, I mean, spray a little bit of this on the top. I'm guessing right now because there's a lot of glare on this photo. And I can't really tell what the color is. So, <clears throat> I'm kind of guessing right now. And it is what it is. So we're gonna do this blue color on the top. And this is more like a royal blue color, kind of. So there it is. You can see the color somewhat, but they're whited out. Okay. Um, you know what, I tried turning off my ring light once and it didn't make much difference, but let me try it again. And I'll see if it makes any difference. I have a ring light on just because I don't know, that's what you're supposed to do when you go live. And uh, let me see if that helps. Still white it out. It might be just the overhead light that does it. You know, I don't know, maybe if I get really close. It's still kind of white. I'm not sure how to fix that. I'll have to do a little research. So I should be able to fix that somehow, but I think my overhead light is really bright and that's part of the reason. Um, I have kind of like some crazy lighting going on here so I can see everything I'm doing. And my husband likes the bright garage. I suppose I could, I suppose I could turn off the overhead light, maybe. That would help. I'll try in a few minutes and see what happens. Okay. 
So I'm going to do some of this blue around the face just for craps and giggles. And if it looks like crap, I'll just, I'll go back and fix it later. Okay. I'm probably going to have to fix part of the face anyway because what happens is um, you do get a little bit of overspray overspray on the scaling and it's not really supposed to have scales on like the gill plate. They don't have scales on the gill plate. They have like some texture, but it's different. Oops, wrong cup. Okay, let's do some scales and see what happens here. So I'm going to start with the sepia because I don't want to overdo the black and then I'm going to come back and shade some areas of black. So um, this is Detail Sepia by uh, Createx also, Wicked Detail Sepia. And then I'm going to reduce this. In this bottle, I have, um, I think it's 4011 or 4013 Reducer by Createx. I don't remember which one it is. I can't tell the difference anyway. It doesn't matter. Either one of those works. Um, I don't know if they still make 4012. I haven't looked. I was told it was being discontinued, but some people say they still can buy it, so I don't really know, to be honest. Um, I would say just they all work fine. I don't think it matters that much. If you just do a lure painting, they give um, – the reducer is kind of almost like – they just make your paint spray smoother, mix smoother. Um, I don't know explain. You can just use water, but for whatever reason, the, the – I'm sure it's designed to do so, makes it spray a little bit smoother. If you're really on a tight budget, you can always just use water. You can even use like um, paints that you get at Walmart, like Apple Barrel or Folk Art. Uh, you can spray those through an airbrush. Um, and if you just want to like play around, if you want to go real cheap, not spend like, like a lot of money, you can definitely do it with those paints. They just don't, um, the pigments aren't as good. They're not as vibrant. They are more chalky. They'll clog your airbrush a lot easier. They're just not really designed for um, spraying. But that's not to say that it won't work. So if you want to get by really on the cheap and try it out, you can. It'll just be much more frustrating to learn that way because you'll have more problems. It's basically the difference. Hello guys, Rusty and Candy, hey Brad, Anthony, have gotten to yours? No, <laughs> I have not, I'm sorry. I'm finishing up, I'm trying to get done a really big order for um, a friend of ours owns a boat repair shop in, in um, Southern Colorado Springs and he um, places an order every spring to stock his shop he sells baits there too and I'm working on finishing that right now and it's a really big order of jerk bait so um, I'm almost I have like one color left to do and then I will be back fairly well caught up so a lot of the colors that you see coming out like the last couple weeks or the ones that are going to come out here shortly and then the two like bright colors that I just put on my website last week those are the same colors that I'm doing for that order. And then um, I'm just doing extra to put in my store as well so that if I'm painting those colors already, I might as well paint, paint some for people to buy if they want to. So that's two of them. And then I have a golden shad and a silver shad coming out. And I can show everybody what those look like here in a second. I have some of them clear coated already. I'm in the process of finishing them right now. So. Um, thank you, Miguel. Uh, let's see. Who else did I miss? Anybody? Yeah, I lost the comments again. It's not loading. When our internet is good, it better be good because I'm like, I'm ready to have everything work the way it's supposed to. Be. All right. So I'm just basically clipping this on all the way around the lure and I'm trying to get it as straight as possible all the way around and tight. So you want, you know, you want like the scales to go straight up and down. See, so they're not like bending or turning. They're straight up and down. 
So you get it as close as you can, right? And they have to be tight, otherwise you'll get um, you'll get you'll get uh, bleeding of the paint underneath the scaling. So it'll start to just kind of like muddy up the lines a little bit where um, where the scale isn't sitting really tight against the bait. And it'll kind of like leave a shadow. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know the words to use to make that more clear, but um, you'll just get some paint overspray under the scales and it won't look as crisp where you've masked it off if you don't get the scales tight or the yeah scaling tight. So this is why it's taking me like 400 years to pin this on. This is why this is why glide paints are expensive because it takes me forever to paint one if I do a really detailed um, pattern like this takes a long time. It looks like an Easter egg right now. An extra pastel. But we're going to add some dark colors and we're going to like take all that away. So, okay, I think that's pretty good. So I've got it pretty, eh, never mind. I got a bad spot over here where it's not, not very tight. So hang on just a second. There we go. That's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. All right, so there, there we have 101 million clips to get all of it straight, and it's straight on the other side too. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm still, it's still loading. All right, I'm gonna go back to my photo, and I'll get to your comments when I can. It's a little bit better, Matt. Thanks for the feedback there. I think it's my overhead light probably needs to be turned off too. All right, I'm gonna try and put this back in here, uh, even though I have nothing left to clip onto. If I clip this onto the ones that are attached to the eyelets or the tail, it should stay put. So this is a helping hand. You can get these at Harbor Freight, or um, you can find them on the internet too. They're for um, electrical, like work, welding, whatever, to hold tiny things in place. Okay. So I have sepia in my brush right now. I've got air leak. I'm gonna turn my air down. This is um, a Grex uh, quick disconnect, and it has a little a little valve on it that you can turn down to get less air if you want to turn your air down. So you don't have to turn it down on your compressor regulator. So I can make it as much or little air as I want with just a quick twist of that. Just like that. So I'm gonna do some shading all the way across the top. It's definitely dark, and then I'm gonna have to come back with some black too. So I thin this down pretty good so I don't overdo it. So we're just gonna go easy and thin. And I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. I'll show you some of the new stuff here. So um, this is fresh off the, the clear coat. This is uh, my, I haven't named it. This is a Chrome 2.5 and this is the back of it. Sorry, this is the back. I'll show you guys on Facebook. So this one is gonna be in the store. Okay, and then um, I have a bunch of different styles, and it comes in a non-chrome as well. So pretty shiny, because um, I use some metallic paints. So that's coming in and out of focus because I'm so close up. But um, this will be in stock too in several several lure styles, and then I will have a golden shad as well. I'm just showing you the square bill. It'll be available in more than one type. I'm getting, it's hard to get this to focus up really close. So from a distance. So there it is. It's a golden shag. And I love how this one turned out. So those will be available. I have swim baits, lipless, deep divers, jerk baits, minnows, square bills. 
And I only did the chrome and the silver shed. I didn't do it in the, in the golden. I don't know why. I might do it later. I don't know. All right. So I'm going to go along the rest of the tail with sepia on this one. And I'm just spraying straight on to the base so that um, I don't spray underneath the netting. You want to spray as direct as you can. So you're not spraying under the netting. And you just have to be slow and careful. And once I get done with the sepia, I'll come back through with black and I will darken some of the stuff up. But for now, I'm going to do brown and then we'll go around with black afterwards. Now, some of the spots are a little bit lighter than the others, so I'm going to leave, you know, the black off those areas. I ran out of paint. Need a little bit more paint here. And the face is going to be totally different. Um, so if this looks like total crap, when I'm done, I'll go back and I'll get the other one that I shaded with the colors out and we'll play with that a little bit. So I'm mostly going over the whole thing like this. And then before I take this mesh off, then I'll add like probably some iridescent colors on top just to bring out some of like the highlights a little bit. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day with the brown. So this is what it looks like now, not very pretty. But I'm going to clean this out, and I'm going to switch to black. And I'm going to do some um, spots darker in black. And then we're going to do, I'm going to pull out some iridescent colors and give it a little flash. And then um, we're going to do, then we'll take that off. And then um, I'm going to cover, I'm going to uh, basically wash out the gill plate. And then we'll have to do that like kind of separately and um, put a little bit of a different pattern on it. So black, here we come. This is pre-reduced black. This is Wicked Detail Black. Let me see if I can get my comments back. I'm sorry, you guys. It's just not working. Thanks. It's not that good looking yet. We'll see what happens. You have good faith in me. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. All right. Come on. There we go. Thanks for the stars very much, Jeff. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate the stars, Miguel. Um, the mid coat. Um, I haven't used a mid coat uh, at all on this. Um. Oh, I'm not making this for Chris. I'm just making it because he wanted to see the color done. Thank you, Dan, for the order. Oh, you're trying to troll. You guys. You use acetone? Yeah, I've been told by, like, Ken from Badger, you know, the guy that owns Badger, that acetone is just, like, a big no-no. So um, I don't do it. Dan, I'm just reading comments here. Everybody's trying to mess with me. I usually just ignore them, so it's not really as fun as they want it to be. Um, all right. I'm not really very good at scaling. I don't know where you get that from, Johnny. I know like 100 million people, and two of them are on this show right now who are way better at scaling than I'll ever be. 
There are some masters out there. All right, so I'm just um, shading along um, the areas on the picture that are more black here. And it's pretty dark in a lot of spots. So, and it's also somewhat irregular in the picture. So I'm kind of picking and choosing where I make it more dark or lighter versus lighter, you know. And some of it's kind of random. So I'm trying to make it look make it blend and look a little bit natural, but not like solid. I'm not that great at these like really random, um, like color. I don't know how to describe what I'm trying to say here. Like these random shading spots where everything's irregular. I like to make everything uniform and pretty. That's just kind of how I do it. And it doesn't always come out most realistic that way. So this, is, I'm trying to make it look more realistic here, but I don't know how it's gonna go. Okay. So that's what I came up with. We'll see how it goes, okay? Like I said, not that great at this, but I'm doing my best. The old college try. The only way you can learn is by trying, right? So this might be a good one too to like add a little bit of black texture. I might do that too. Let's do that. Let's just do that. I'm gonna put lots of scaling on the face. It's a joke. It's an inside joke. They're probably not listening anymore anyways. All right, so let's take a texture stencil and let's do like some random black texture on top of the scales. This is uh, just, ah! I've been knocking over a lot of cuts too lately. I've got problems. This is just a random texture scale from Anarchy Models. It's called um, Modeled. Less modeled, but like the large size, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna put like some, I don't know, texture spots on here in really dark colors, just to kind of break it up a little bit. I moved my scaling a little bit. It got kind of jacked up, so I already made a mistake. When I dropped it, it moved some of it, but I'm not gonna mess with it, because if I do, it'll just I'll end up regretting it. So I'm just gonna leave it and we'll just work with it. So I'm just adding some random texture spots all over wherever it looks dark in this photo. I think it should turn out pretty decent. I think it might look kind of cool actually. So we'll see what happens. So I just, I don't know if you can see where I added some black texture spots in, in there. Try to get close up. It's kind of hard to see uh, over. When you're looking at this netting like that, it's kind of hard to see um, little texture spots like that. When I take the, the mesh off, you'll be able to see it a lot better. So let's just add, I'm just adding some texture spots on here with the stencil. And then uh, along the belly, I'm going about this all wrong. That's why I'm going to turn that around. I don't use helping hands a lot, you can tell, because I keep jacking them. I usually hold my lures with uh, in a binder clip when I paint. I just hold them like, like this when I paint in my hand. I don't use... Uh, I'm one of the rare people who like really doesn't use helping hands, and uh, I find them cumbersome and kind of like in the way. But for glide baits, they definitely um, help 
because they're very big and awkward to hold. Okay, so I added some texture in a whole bunch of random spots on this, and then um, we'll do some some iridescent um, colors now, and then we'll do the face. Okay, so let me wait. Let me clean this out. And then I'm gonna do some. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of like um, uh, gold along the tail area, and then along the head area. And I'm gonna bust out like some dark blue, um, like dark blue and purple iridescence um, for like along the body. Um, and I use Dr. Mark, Dr. Ph. Martin's leaves for that. They're the prettiest anyways. Um, you can use, you can just use um, like folk art or Ceramco color ships, but these are pretty nice too. The only downside of these is that they're kind of hard to spray sometimes, um, but colors are really pretty. And I'm gonna actually grab that one too now that I think about it. The colors are really pretty. And um, so if you can get it to work, it's worth it. Yeah, I'm trying to get close to the picture, Matt. <laughs> Share the feed, guys, if you haven't shared yet, please, and then check out the special I have going on right now, too. It's posted in the pinned comment. And then also follow me on Instagram if you haven't, and share my page there, too. That's where I post all my new stuff. When I have something I need, you know, I newly post the website, that's where I will post that it's available. All right. My Colorado customer's cup, my friend makes these. She's very talented. All right. This color is copper plate gold. And this is Dr. P.H. Martin's ink. It'll be backwards on my YouTube uh, feed because I still haven't figured out how to flip that one around. I have to go in. There's a couple things I gotta figure out, I guess. So I'm just going to put this on the tail area a little bit. I don't know why I have to reload this every single time. It doesn't. Just a little bit. Where it's yellow. On the back side here, I'm just kind of like spritzing it. And that's a huge waste of paint, but that's all I'm going to do. I didn't put that much in there. I don't use these very often either. They're more of an accent color. Um, these iridescent inks are more of an accent color. So a little bit will last you a long time. And they do clog your brush a little bit. So you need like a 0.5 um, or a 0.35 at the smallest probably to spray these. If you go with like um, a 0.2, you definitely won't spray through a 0.2 at all. Oh, frustrated. My internet sucks. Okay. So I'm putting a little bit of deep, iridescent deep blue. Sometimes the pigments, like the, the flake, get stuck in this dropper top a little bit. It's probably how I store them, which is my own damn fault, but it's all right. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, you're going to have to PM me, Anthony. I'm not, I don't have anything to write down your request with. So when I'm live, if you have specific requests with custom orders or something you want me to paint, make sure you PM me because I won't remember anything that I read on the, the live feed. Um, I can't, I just can't remember. Oh yeah, Johnny, that's awesome. Is the one I'm doing for sale? Yes, it will be. If you uh, like it at the end of the feed and you want one, let me know. Um, okay, so back to the picture. I'm gonna spritz along the belly here, blue. This is gonna be sick. 
a little bit there, a little bit along the back. Woo, it's like really pretty. You guys wanna see it, don't you? You're like, let me see, let me see. So uh, this is the iridescent deep blue. And once I pull this netting off, you'll be able to see everything a lot better there. Unfortunately, you have to use kind of a lot of pressure when you spray these paints because they don't spray very smooth. So you kind of just have to go for it. All right, that's enough of that. I'm gonna actually come back to this color on the face probably, but I have to clean it out for now. And then, I think I'm gonna, not, not with the purple, well, maybe just a little bit with the purple. Um, so let me put a little bit of this purple in. This is um, iridescent violet. So the flake gets kind of settled in there. Um, so you just have to shake it up really good. They have a little marble in there. So it's not hard, it's not very hard to shake it up. Just a tiny bit. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit like right in the middle and then right behind the, by the fin. Um, smidge right there. I'm just putting just a little bit down in purple. Okay. Just devil do ya. See, I'm always knocking stuff over. Okay. Now, I'm thinking if I can take this scaling off yet or if I need something else. I'll do the shading. Eh, I'll do the shading afterwards. Let's take it off. You ready? You guys ready? Let's make sure it's dry. It's dry. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm going to regret this because I bet you I forgot something. It always happens. Okay. That face. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, the scaling didn't turn out as good as I thought. Well, it's still there. It's just not quite as well scaled as I'd hoped. And part of that is the texture on these. You can see it, kind of, but do you see it? Yeah, you can see it. I take it back. So the pictures don't look as pretty on YouTube. Um, they look way better in person, to be honest, than they do on that YouTube video. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know. It does look pretty damn close, but let's do the face first. I definitely think I need a thicker netting to get a better scale pattern on there, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and dull down the face and we're going to put some solid color on there. So I don't want to really use, um, I don't want to use a uh, solid white. So I'm going to see if I can use, and the reason is just because of overspray. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to see if I can get a metallic white to go over it. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, masking so that I don't overspray it. And we'll see if this covers it. If it doesn't, then I can use regular white, but I'm going to try not to. So this is metallic white. It's an auto air by Createx color. Metallic white. And then I'm just going to grab um, a card and I'm just going to cut out like uh, something to cover that up. So let me just make a rough. That's pretty good, actually. What are the chances? Okay, so basically all I'm doing with that is I'm covering up everything but the, the gill plate. Does that make sense? I'll get it a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to kind of um, cover up 
at least the area around the eye and back on the gill plate. And we're going to do this in a flatter color. Really, you shouldn't, like, the face of a, a bluegill doesn't really have scales. It has, like, a, some texture, but not scales. I just heard a weird noise. I watch, I listen to too many uh, true crime podcasts while I'm working. So I always think that, like, somebody's trying to break in. And then I gotta reset this. It's not working. Well, it helps if you actually turn it the right switch on. Share the feed if you haven't, guys. Share the feed and also check out the pin comment for the details on how to order and the deal I'm running until tomorrow. Okay, so that's pretty good. So that's just a metallic white, and I just covered up basically what was up on the face. Why I painted it to begin with, I have no idea. I I didn't do really much of anything when I was. Um, when I was painting the, the scale texture, because I knew I was going to cover it up. So anyways, um, the one thing that I dislike about this blank a little bit is the fact that it has so much texture on it and the texture while it looks you know nice and realistic definitely takes away from like the it, it makes it harder to paint your own detail on there because the grooves make it harder to stencil they make it harder to make scaling I'm sure it's like there's there's a way to do it better than what I just did probably with like a thicker net a thicker netting but um, it definitely is more challenging on a technique than it is on something that's not. So let me go ahead and use my violet here. I'll do a flat color and then I'll come back through. With some, I might or might not use iridescent. I haven't decided yet here, but I'm gonna do the purple along here on the bottom, okay, on the bottom of the cheek there up along the side and I'll do the other side a lot of this will get covered up and I have a little bit of purple kind of up on the top side here too so pearl paint's not the only way to get pearl. If you've never thought about it this way, you can use like a metallic paint and then paint like a solid, you know, transparent color over top of it. See how that purple looks pearl even though it's not a pearl color? Just because of what I painted over, which was a metallic white. So um, another way to get, you don't always have to use a pearl paint to get that effect. The layering is, is something that she learned over time a little bit, and it still is a challenge to, to like conceptualize like how those colors are gonna layer. Um, it's something that doesn't always work out the way that you hope that it's gonna work out. And then sometimes you make happy little accidents, as we call them in the painting world. So cobalt, and then I'm gonna do some Wait, let me think about this for a second. I'm going to change my mind. Um, let, me tr let me try bright blue, and then I'm going to use the cobalt for some texture. And this might be a mistake, so let's see what happens. But we'll just see what happens. This is transparent bright blue. That came out really fast there, just all of a sudden. Thank you, Matt. I mean, it definitely, I definitely think that 
better scaling when her or sometimes if you get like some mesh that has it's already dirty you know like it has a bunch of paint on it already then it makes it look thicker um because i think that with the texture on this lure it, it really is hard to see any of the scaling that i did um it's really hard to see it so that's one downside i have a smooth small glide thing i could have done this on that would have it would have turned out a lot better as far as the scaling goes but um it's much smaller and it would have been harder to get the details on but maybe next time I do this, I'll try it on that one and see if it comes out better. That's the downside of these textured blades. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, darker blue texture on top of this, like the picture with the cobalt and see if it works. That came out way too fast. I'm not going to thin this. Uh, but I'm going to take this as just a smaller version of that stencil that I used at the beginning. And I'm going to use this to just make some texture um, along the eyes and face area. Just like that, if you can see it or not. I'll show the other side here too now. So there's a little bit of a, this is kind of how it looks in the picture too. And, um, and then I'm going to put some black back in here. Or about right to do the fin and then black and We'll do the ear flap and the fin. And maybe a little more texture on it just to kind of break it up a little bit. The gold really took over on that tail more than I thought it was going to. So I'm probably going to um, shade that a little bit with some brown. This is a hard one for sure, like really hard. I'm probably trying too hard to get like as close as possible to the actual lure. And that's not necessarily a good thing sometimes. Sometimes if you try and get too close, it just ends up eating you alive in a way. I'm cutting a, a thin stencil right now. The scissors. It's my super fancy fit stencils technique. See? I just guessed. And it is pretty damn close, but not quite. I have to tape this down because um, the bottom here is. Well, it'll be okay. I don't need to worry. Trace around this fin stencil, and I'm just lining it up with the lure right here where the fin is. If you can see this in the, I'm just lining it up. And I'm going to trace along the top edge of the, um, the fin. And I'm going to fill most of it in because in the picture it's pretty dark. The whole thing is. Kind of like so. And it might need a little bit of black too. Just because you don't want it, the fin to look like it's got scales on it. Because that's weird. You can see through them a little bit, but not that much. So. Okay. 
So I'm just filling in this skin right now with a little bit of brown. Just shading that in a little bit more to cover up the... Then I'm going to do um, a little bit of shading along the top side of the tail here over the gold to brown it up a little bit because it was a little more brown in the picture. It'll still be like shimmery, but it'll be a little bit more brown. Um, and then there's some more brownish along the top here. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I just darken around the eye sockets on everything. That's just something that I do because I think it looks more realistic that way. And uh, it helps the eye, whatever eyeball you do put in there. It helps it um, pop a little bit more. And then we'll go back to black here in a second. So it's coming along. So just a little more black texture and along the spine and then it'll be done. When it clears, when I clear it too, it'll probably look a lot different than it does now. Sometimes the details show up better with a little bit of clear coat on. But I mean, I won't know until it's done. I can clear coat it tomorrow. Um, there's a lot of scaling that I wish showed up. And so I think my number one takeaway from this is that if I were to do it again, I would use a thicker scale, uh, thicker scale netting to try and make it look like the scales were more, I don't know, defined, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Um, that'd be my, the biggest thing I would change going back and, um, and correcting anything. I'm just adding in back in a little bit of black texture on this that kind of didn't, it's not really showing up now that I have the rest of the stuff on here. So I'm just adding a little bit in, back in. I, it looks really pretty though, it still does. I mean, I, I think it still turned out good. It's just not, I'm really critical of the details. And I wish, I would like to see it a little closer. I would like to see the scales pop a little more. And that's the part that I'm not fully satisfied with, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I'm still, I'm outlining the thin and black a little bit um, on the top side. And I'm just running along the edge of the stencil, so like this top edge of the stencil, just to give it a little bit more um, definition on the top side if you can see what I'm doing there and then I added a little bit of black texture along there a little along the belly and then just some in random spots and then I'll do the other side and then um, once that's done I'll add the, um, the air flap and then uh, the black spine and it should be pretty much done then. in this picture it has a blue a black eye but I think that's just the Photoshop and the fact that it's dilated in the picture. So I don't think it, you know, the eyes really look like that. And one of these kinds of baits, sometimes you want to use a really interesting eye when you have something that's colored like this. You just want to use an interesting eye of some kind. So I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but uh, I'm not much of a crazy eyes kind of painter. I try to like, I like large pupil eyes. I like realistic eyes. I don't use, use a lot of like weird um, lizard eyes and all that stuff. It's just not, they look cool, but it's just not my style, you know. Um, everybody's got their own way of doing things. And I have a hard time with them. I put them on and I'm like, oh, that just looks so weird. I can't do it. That's way too much texture right there. So that was an, an oopsie. Okay. Ear flap real quick here. So I'll just take a chunk of paper. I have ear flap stencils, but I have literally 
I have no idea where they are. So I'm just going to cut one so I don't have to uh, force you to wait while I look through my pile of stencils that never seems to come to an end. And so I'm just cutting out like a crescent kind of shape here. And then I'll just, uh, I'll just spray right inside of it. Just like a little, you know, the nacho. And then I'll just spray black. Right in there. Until I get it filled in. And you can go a little past the, you know, ear flap. So it kind of like blends in a little bit with the face. I think I just, hang on a second. I just bumped it a little bit with my paper. So like this right here. Is that at all? I'll do the other side now too. I don't know, I give it like a seven. It's a lot of colors, it's a lot of work. Let that dry just a second, and then I'm gonna go a little bit further with it, and I'll hit the spine here then. Oh, I hope everybody is having a good night. I haven't asked you guys how you're doing much. Hope you're having good weather. It's been better here, definitely. We've had some nice days, 70s, even 80s once or twice. Can't complain about that. I like it hot. I'll take, I'll take 80s every day. I'm good with that. So I'm just um, filling in the spine area with black now. I get along the edge of the skin on top here and on the back side. Okay. So there we have it. So this is my reference photo and my bait. So obviously the screen is a lot brighter and this will look a lot different when it's cleared and when I have better lighting, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of eyes out there on there, but we'll figure it out. But I like it. I think it's pretty cool. So hopefully you guys like it too. And um, hello, Paul. Thanks you guys for joining me tonight. I don't know if my pin comment is still there. If I missed you guys' comments, my internet's not great right now so um pm me if i missed anything and uh, um i will guys next week have a wonderful evening and thanks for joining us check out my website coloradocustomlures.com and follow me on instagram at colorado custom lures have a good night thank you <laughs>